Hey guys, it's definitely been a while since I've been in hair this dark. But why do I have this wig on? Well, I'm going to explain something to you. This is just like a little wig chat that I'm going to have. Actually, uh, there is no such thing as a little wig chat. This will probably go on for a half hour. But I just wanted to um, show you something. I had a comment in one of my videos about thinning a wig. So I wanted to take one of my super thick wigs. Now, this is um, a budget-friendly wig. This was around $38 to $40. This is um, Storm by Model Model. Now, when I first started wearing wigs, this was my favorite wig. I still had dark hair. I hadn't done the transition over to lighter hair. Um, this, this was one of the first wigs that I had after I started, uh, after I stopped wearing toppers. So you can see here's the parting space. It doesn't like the hairline. I'm not going to lie. The hairline doesn't look as natural as a more pricey wig, but that's not the gist of this video. This section of the video is to show you how to thin a wig. Now, I purchased this, and the name of this is so dopey. This is a tinkle. Why do I think of talking to a little toddler boy who's learning how to use the toilet for the first time? Tinkle in the potty, honey. Tinkle in the potty. This is a thinning comb. You can get these for under $3. I think I paid like two bucks at a local beauty supply shop. And I do have a couple of them. Um, we have two different blades. It says, if you have thin hair, cut the delicate parts with the softer blade. And if you have thick hair, you can cut a lot quickly using the other end. Okay, so let me take this out. Oh, yes, and I have used this. So what you want to do, now I know people keep their wigs on mannequin heads when they're doing stuff like this. I don't. To me, it's just easier to do this when the wig is on my head. So here's what you want to do. I'm going to take my glasses off for this. And yeah, I'm blind. So you want to take the blade. And very gently, just run it down the hair, the length of the wig. Can you see? You're not going to start off by taking a ton of hair off. I don't believe in that because you're better off taking your time, using your patience, and just going slowly because you don't want to do this in a rush. You want, you know, obviously you want to take your time, especially when you're new to wigs and you're doing this for the first time. You, I don't care if you pay 10 bucks on a wig, 20 bucks, or whether you bought an expensive wig, you don't want to ruin what you paid for. So here we go. I'm going to use this end. And here's more. I the ends with the longer prongs seems to work better for me in thinning them out, but you know, it's your wig. So you have to kind of decide what you want to do. Now hold on. I'm gonna thin her out a little bit more and then I shall return. I will be right back, okay? Because this is the dining room table. My husband's out now. If he came back and saw me doing this at the table, he'd be totally grossed out, as would any normal person, but I'm not normal. So yeah, let me go to the bathroom and do this. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And I feel bad that I did this with a dark wig because you really can't get the effect, but this wig 
definitely feels a lot lighter and a lot of the bulk has been taken from the front. It took me less than a minute and this is what I got. I put it in a bag because it's neater. I, I, trust me. So I think that this is an absolutely invaluable, or is it most valuable tool when it comes to owning wigs. Um, I've only had to use this on one expensive wig because the front just needed a little bulk taken out. So yeah, Tinkle, oh God, I, I, that name just drives me crazy. So um, get a Tinkle for your wig. I, it, this is the greatest little tool and it costs like next to nothing, okay? I'm gonna take this off. I'll tell you, I am so not used to having dark hair anymore it's crazy and the thing is i love the style of this wig this is a non-style style i love it but it doesn't come in light colors so that's the thing that is kind of upsetting and i don't even know if model model make that storm wig anymore but anyway I'm gonna put another wig on. This is, wait, this is Gabor's socialite. I haven't worn her in a really long time and I think she kind of needs to be washed. So hold on. Actually, she's looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna talk about combs. So you have your wigs and you really shouldn't be brushing a good wig out because you can kind of ruin the fibers. What you want is a wide tooth comb. Now, any wide tooth comb will do. I personally love this John Renault slash easy hair wide tooth comb because it fits so well in your palm but it fits so well into your purse it's unbelievable this is my travel comb i have seven of these and i have them in every purse that i use one is in my travel bag there's usually a couple that i find around the house because i misplace them but my thing is, you can't have enough of these. So, since I haven't worn her in a while, I think she's definitely a good example of how to comb. What I do is, well, when the wigs, after I wear a wig, I just took the wig off. Hold on. I went to work. I took the wig off. Here it is. What I will do, I will start at the bottom very gingerly and very carefully. I have my wide tooth comb and I'll just gently, gently, gently go through any knotting or any snags that have accumulated during the day. Now, this is a process that depending on if you've been wearing textured clothing or whatever, some days you might have a little bit more snags than others. But what I'm telling you, take your time. You don't want to go through these wigs roughly. You paid a lot of money for them. Even if you didn't pay a lot of money, you still want to be careful with them. You want to treat them, you want to treat them very carefully because this is an investment. This is an investment on your looks. It's an investment on your hair, even if it's fake, it's just an investment. It's part of you, it's for you and only for you. So you wanna do the best, take care of your wigs. And that's another thing. Okay, now I'm taking the wig off again because that's another thing. I had another comment and somebody asked me, 
what the proper way to put a wig on is. All right, I'm going to go on the record to say, I think you have to work with the way that's best for you. I know a lot of people put them on from back to front. I put my wigs on from front to back. So let me put this on again so I can show you. What I do is I try to get the, and this is why I keep the tags on because these tags are in the center in the back. So I try to center the wig as best as possible and then pull it over and then bring, stretch the wig down to the nape, okay? Now, now she's on, but there's still a little bit of adjusting to do. If you've ever watched Patty's Pearls, and she's really good, I love her, she's such a sweet lady. Um, her rule of thumb is the forehead should be like four fingers. I have kind of a Neanderthal natural hairline. Um, let, I, I, I'm gonna say, if I was born in the caveman times, those cavemen would have been coming after me like crazy because my hairline is so low. I would have been considered a great caveman beauty. So what I do, I go three fingers simply because my natural hairline is low. So I think what works best for you is you need to know your natural hairline. Um, you need to be comfortable with the frame and the shape of your face. Now, I adjust, next I adjust the ear tabs simply because I wear glasses. So I will bend them and then pull them down while I have the glasses on. And then I'll just kind of like run my fingers over my ears to make sure that everything is in place. And that's it. You know, I'll do a little doodad with the comb. Fix the ends a little. And that's it. I think after I do this video, I'm gonna wash her because I do think she needs to be washed. You know, I, I've i said it many times, I don't wash my wigs often because I think the less you wash your wigs, the more of a um, shelf life and wear life you're going to get out of them. It's the same like bio hair. My bio hair um, is really dry. And when I had a ton of bio hair and before I wore wigs, I only washed my hair from once a week to every 10 days because yes, my hair was that dry. It was that thick. It was that porous and dirt never showed up. So I think you are better off on the side of less frequent washings than more frequent washings. That's just me. Now, another thing that I did, this is an old elf um, makeup mist and set that I used up, but I don't like to throw things away. So I saved this little spray bottle. What I did, I added a little bit of the um, Cantu, um, bamboo conditioner for wigs, just a little because it's very thick, and water. And I shook it up. And at the end of the day, if I do find that a wig is tangled at the end, I'll just, I'll give it a little spray before I comb it out. Then I'll comb out the ends. I'll give it another little spray, but ju just a little spray. You don't want too much. And then I'll just kind of hang it upside down to let the spray dry completely before I store the wig back in the box it came in. So that's it. I think that there are a lot of, there's a lot of things to know about wigs. And I think the more you become more comfortable with wigs, 
And the more research that you do, the better off you're going to be. A lot of it is trial and error. When I first started wearing wigs, like full on wigs, I made some incredible mistakes. Like I, the first wig that I ever, ever purchased was Scorpio by Revlon and Revlon wigs um, are no longer in existence. I, I think they sold it to a company named Orchid. Scorpio was a great wig. And I, I still swear by the fact that it still is a great wig. And as a first wig, it was perfect for me because I had a bob at the time, but I was so afraid to wear her outside. Like I really was. I was more concerned about what people would think of me or if they would be able to tell it was a wig. Like I was really, I was so torn and I shouldn't have been. And I did wear the Scorpio wig out to my sisters out in Long Island. Um, oh my God, my, her, her youngest daughter, my niece was still in high school at the time. She got into the car and was like, hey, Aunt Kathy, is that a wig? I, I felt so awful when she asked that question because I didn't want anybody to know that I was wearing a wig. And I was like, yeah, it is a wig. And you know, her reaction was, it looks really good. That's it. So that was kind of a lesson that I needed to stop thinking about what other people thought and just started thinking about me. Because when you're wearing a wig, Most of the women who wear wigs are wearing wigs because they have to, not because it's a frivolous kind of purchase, not because they want to kind of wear it for fun. Now, there are, trust me, there are a lot of women that do wear wigs that have all of their hair. A lot, most women wear wigs for hair loss. So that's devast it's like bad enough that you're suffering. Um, no, hold on, that's the wrong word. I experiencing hair loss because I don't consider hair loss to be suffering. I think your emotions are suffering because of the way you feel about your hair loss. But I don't think hair loss itself is suffering per se, because there are so many options with wigs. And once you discover the options with wigs, you are no longer going to have any feelings of suffering. You're going to wear that wig and wear it proudly. And that's the other thing. Own it. Strut your stuff. Be like that girl that struts herself doing the walk of shame. You do the walk of wig. And when you do the walk of wig, other people will notice your confidence level. And trust me, I've had people like last week, last weekend, I wore um, Aesthetica's new Sutton in um, the silver spun color. And my husband and I went into Wegmans when we were coming back in the parking lot, a truck stopped me. And it was a young guy, hips, very hipster looking, and his girlfriend, very hipster looking. I'm a, a fan of the hipsters. And they said to me, hey, we just wanted to stop you, but your hair is great. It just looks so beautiful. And I'm sure like their initial reaction was, wow, that older, older woman really looks good with that white hair. And then I told them, I was like, hey, it's a wig. Can you believe it? This is a wig. And they were stunned. So it's a, it's a conversation starter. I've had many people compliment me when I've been wearing different wigs. And I've gotten more compliments with wigs than my bio hair. 
So one of the things about wearing a wig is that accept it. Accept it, embrace it, and wear it well. Do your research. Do research. If you see a wig that you like, or if there's a certain hairstyle that you like, Google it, but Google it as a wig. Say you like the long layered look, then Google long layered wigs for sale and websites will come up. You need to be aware that not all wig sites have been created equally. Um, there are scammers out there. Beware the scammers. Beware the wigs from Facebook. There are a lot of scammed wig sites on Facebook that will take your money and run. If you see an ad that a Raquel Welch wig or a Gabor wig or an Aesthetica wig is $35, no, it's a scam. And don't ever forget that. What you will receive is not the real wig. These companies are China-based. I don't know how they get away with it. Trust me, I have been placed in Facebook jail three times for remarks that I've made about a certain person in the White House. But yet, Facebook allows all of these wig scammers to continue scamming people on Facebook. I'm like, I'm astounded. Beware any wig site that has photographs of celebrities, unless it's a celebrity wig. Paula Young, I don't use that web. I, I've never purchased a Paula Young wig. Um, there are some who love her wigs and there are some who don't. It's all personal preference. But she does sell a Jacqueline Smith line of wigs. This is a wig line that Jacqueline Smith created or like is the spokesperson, whatever. That's okay. That's okay. The same with Ra Raquel Welch wig. That's okay. But it's not okay when you go to a website and see a picture of one of the Kardashians with wig for sale underneath. No, because that's not, you're not getting the expensive wigs that the Kardashian sisters buy, okay? You gotta use your common sense. Use what's underneath your wig hair. If it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. So those are just some of the um, things that I wanted to bring up about wearing wigs. Um, you're new to wigs. Just do your research, do your research, do your research. I'm going to put the names of the wig companies that I order from down below. So you'll know that they're not scammers. There's also, um, I'm going to give you, see, there's a woman who sells on Facebook. She's really, really good. Um, but I don't know whether I can put the link simply because it's a closed group. So I'm not sure, but I'm just going to, for now, stick to the online sites that I use. Okay. So that's it. My God, I have gone on way too long and I'm taking up way too much of your time. My apologies. But once I get started on the subject, sometimes it's hard to stop. So that's it. Have a great day. Have a great week. And I will see you next weekend. We're going into New York next weekend. So, well, next Saturday, we're going into New York. So I will be reporting on our visit on Sunday. See you later and have a great day. Bye now.